Okay, so what I have here is a simple two degree of freedom flexor. And the purpose of this is, um, well, this was printed for different size slide pots, but I think it demonstrates fine. Um, basically, it's to get kind of a joystick apparatus from flexures in a cheap way. So this top one moves linearly like this, and then side to side should move the slide pots on this lower part right here. So that's what it does. Uh, it works really well on the others, but that's the purpose of this little flexure right there, 3D printed out of PETG. So the type of uh, two DOF flexure that I'm going to make today is just going to be a combination of two one degree of freedom uh, flexure. Super easy to make, but we'll start off the same way as we did last time. Um, if you look at the stress study, um, we basically have a 30.33 MPA max uh, stress uh, on, on this part right here. So starting out the same way, we would say um, we need to care about that because we need to know when this is going to break. And when is it going to break? If we look up the SN curve of PETG, we can see at around 30, we're going to get 5,000 cycles out of this. So uh, that would mean we move this back and forth around 5,000 times and we would expect that part to break. It may be more, it may be less. Um, there may be better ways to design this. Um, but as it's built, we would expect that to last around 5,000 cycles. So uh, we need to care about that. And what else do we need to care about? We need to care about uh, how we're printing it, our nozzle size on our um, on our part uh, on our three D printer, right? So the nozzle size on mine is 0.4 millimeters. That is, has an output the extrusion width of 0.45 millimeters. So we need to design this in increments of 0.45 mils, uh, millimeters. So this one is 0.9 millimeters width. So we get two extrusions side by side, and we want to eliminate infill on this, uh, even though there's probably ways to, to make infill that works well. So how do we turn this one DAW into two DAW? Let's get rid of this, and go back to this sketch. Um, so all we're going to do is basically recreate this exact same thing around this sketch. Um, so since we're going vertically right here, we are going to create a flexure that goes horizontally, and we'll do it the same way as before. So this is going to be three by three, oops, three by three millimeters. So this space in between is going to be um, how far this flexure moves. So 0.9 millimeters is the width of the actual flexure. So this is 30.8 by 0.9 millimeters. So this is what's actually going to flex, right? Uh, and then we need one on the other side. So when we go the other way, three. So the things to keep in mind here, so obviously the width here matters, um, but so does, uh, you know, so the, the width of this, right, so since this is longer than this arm, this is gonna have less stress, but it'll also take less force, so they won't be equal. Um, so, you know, if you know how to, you know, make this exact, um, let me know. I haven't figured it out yet, but essentially what I have kind of discovered it, is if I double this, um, I basically need to do 1.5 times the width. So if this is the length here is, you know, something like 17 millimeters, I would do, um, 34 millimeters and then 1.5 times the width of that to get an equal force. But, um, I don't think that's quite equal, but it's worked out in practice. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas, please let me know. So we'll make this the same exact length. We're not going to worry about this too much uh, as the outside of this. These are not going to be equal, but yeah, let's keep going. All right, so now all we need to do is make where we're going to end. We're going to make this uh, three millimeters wide. Oops. One, two millimeters wide. And up there, this is the 34 point. Okay, so essentially now we kind of have our, our basis for this flexure. Um, so we can go ahead and 
mirror this. Right, so I'm going to select all of these. How about that? I select it. Don't want that. All right, and so I can say create a mirror. And the mirror line is right there. Okay. I'm going to take all this. I'm going to do a move copy. Okay. And I'm going to rotate it around this. 180 degrees. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty much that. Let's cut these lines away. And if I select this, we can see that this is starting to take shape. Um, so now I have this side to side motion, um, and I have this up down motion in the center. So if I placed something like, uh, let's see, a Hall effect sensor, like a you know, I would be able to tell its position in two dimensions. Uh, and, you know, obviously the thicker I print this, right, if I, I print this thicker, you can see that if I push down in here, let's see, it is kind of bending with that, right? So you would want to make this thicker than, than that, right? Um, significantly, so it resists that pressure. Um, but this is the basic design, so we're just going to close this out now. So we need a little bit of buffer room on the side. We're going to put one millimeter of buffer room there, put one millimeter of buffer room here, oopsies, okay, and then we basically want to just surround this whole thing, so we have enough space there, there, so I just want to come up three millimeters here. Three millimeters down below, so it's 42. There we go. Jeez. Messing this up. Down. There we go. We do this one. Alright, so now I can just start bringing these out. So we have a space here, we have a space here. Let's get rid of these. So we can see this a little bit better. I want this to come up. So this will be the gap. Yeah, probably not the most efficient way to do this, but let's see where we're at. So it's coming up here, it's traveling all the way around there doesn't exist. Da, 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 da. This whole thing comes here. This is all I can go with. This is here. Oops. This gap needs a whole arm right there. Okay. So all we're doing is we're just enclosing this whole thing. If I select the profile, you can see I'm starting to get the enclosure going right. We have this motion right there. This left right now, we just need to close it up over here. So if I select the profile, we can kind of see what we need to close off. This arm is traveling up around here. It needs to connect to this outside body and then this outside body here. So if we do that, we're good. And one last one right there. should be it. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Um, we've got three millimeters here, 0.9 millimeter arms on both sides. We've got basically a three millimeter outside of this, right? So if we were to attach the outside, we would have freely moving in two directions of this inside portion. And that's as simple as it is. It's basically a one-off system surrounded by a two that's turned sideways.